Hello everyone, Golden Nova here. Patron week is upon us, and the results of this month's poll are in. Y'all wanted some 5D's flavor, and I'm more than happy to provide, especially because we get to cover the beginning of a huge chapter in the history of Synchro Summoning. Premiering in the May 2011 core set, Extreme Victory, Tech Genus, hereafter referred to as TG, immediately had an impact on the game. While not every member of the theme is fondly remembered, both main and extra deck monsters have found themselves in lists consistently since their release. From successful tournament brews to janky builds meant to lack as much interaction as possible because for as long as Yu-Gi-Oh has existed, there have been players who would rather just be playing solitaire. But not today. For this episode, we're going to focus on what makes this deck tick and how it pushed the boundaries of Synchro Summoning. Grab onto those flight controls because it's time to Delta Excel with TG. Today's episode is brought to you by my lovely patrons and the fine people over at Dragon Shield. If you want to protect your cards with the strongest scales on the market that even come with their own lore while supporting the channel, use my affiliate link in the description. So, what's the deal with TG? Well, it's another kind of archetype that doesn't really have a consistent type, attribute, driver's license number, or zodiac sign. They're all tied together by their name and a general vibe of synchro summoning, spitting out materials onto the field as quickly and cheaply as possible to make some really outrageous boss monsters. Now, that sounds like I'm describing basically any deck out of the synchro era, but here we have a bit of a twist. TG introduced a number of synchros that require other synchros as material, both the tuner and non-tuners. And while this isn't mechanically different from regular synchro summoning, it does have some cool names in the anime. Excel synchro summoning for when you use a synchro tuner and one or more synchro non-tuners, and Delta Excel synchro summoning, which uses a synchro tuner and two or more non-tuner synchro monsters. Fun fact, if you do a Delta Excel synchro at a tournament, you're allowed to start blasting Clear Mind. I mean, it's not allowed by tournament rules, but I'll allow you to do it, and that's, like, the same thing, right? Let's get started by covering the nuts and bolts of the theme, our main deck monsters. And first on the list is TG Cyber Magician, a level 1 light spell caster tuner monster with zero attack and defense. And if this card you control would be used as synchro material for a TG monster, TG monsters in your hand can be used as the non-tuner synchro material. And once per turn during the end phase, if this card is in the grave because it was destroyed on the field and sent there this turn, you can add a TG monster from your deck to your hand, except a copy of itself. And uh, get used to that last effect because we're going to be seeing it a lot. Kind of wish we had a snappy keyword for this. Any good suggestions on how to shorten this down besides saying it floats into another one? Anyway, while TG put Excel synchroing on the map, not all of our monsters require it, so Cyber Magician is in a great position to help get those onto the board, especially if you can slap it onto the board without using a normal summon via an effect like One for One. It's also really cute to see what monsters participate in Bring Your Child to Work Day. Arcanite Magician even let their little kid borrow their hat. How cute. TG Booster Raptor is a level 1 wind dinosaur monster with 400 attack and 300 defense, and if you control a TG monster, you can special summon this card from your hand, but you can only do this once per turn. Also once per turn, during the end phase, if this card is in the grave because it was destroyed on the field and sent there this turn, you can add a TG monster from your deck to your hand except a copy of this card. This gives you a free monster that you can summon alongside our others to help make up small gaps in our synchro levels, making this an excellent additional search off of our other monsters. But that's not at all. It can also just act as a blocker that can float into another TG or help with Link Summoning, as we do actually have an on-theme option for it that came out in recent years. It also has a hidden effect where it gets people that don't like feathers on dinosaurs really mad. You know, like cowards. TG Tank Grub is a level 1 Earth Insect Tuner monster with zero attack and defense, and if this card you control would be used as synchro material for a TG monster, you can treat it as a non-tuner. And if this card is sent to the grave as synchro material for a TG monster, you can special summon a TG token, which is a level 1 Earth Machine monster with zero attack and defense in attack position, so make sure that you use that token for something as soon as possible. Like Raptor, this token can help bridge the gap to help make your important synchros, as well as helping to cover the material 
material requirements for non-Excel synchros that need two or more non-tuners. Reminder that Trishula has never stopped being incredibly good. It also has a lot of utility with synchro tuners, as you can get whatever effect that monster has, then turn it into a synchro one level higher just by using that token. It's a stupendously useful effect in a number of synchro lines, so when you're fetching a monster with your TGs on destruction effect, make sure you grab some grub. TG Gear Zombie is a level 1 dark zombie tuner monster with 600 attack and 0 defense, and you can target a TG monster you control to special summon this card from your hand, then the targeted monster loses 1000 attack. So this is another monster that we can deploy easily from the hand, but this one's a tuner to help get your synchros off the ground. And the attack drop isn't even that bad. As long as you're debuffing a monster you're going to use as synchro material, it doesn't really matter because it's gonna leave the field anyway. It's a great extender, but not a very good communicator. I mean, its lips are made out of gears, its pronunciation is gonna be a little off. TG Drillfish is a level 1 water fish monster with 100 attack and 800 defense that you can special summon from your hand if all monsters you control are TG monsters, minimum 1. This card can attack directly, and when any TG monster you control inflicts battle damage to your opponent, you can target a monster your opponent controls and destroy it. This makes Drillfish kinda like Altergeist Meluseek, a comparison I'm going to immediately forget about to keep myself from going into a blind rage. Though to be real, this does make for a very nice tool to get rid of a problem monster, after which point you can still use it as a level bridge, making this a very versatile narwhal breaker. TG Striker is a level 2 Earth Warrior Tuner Monster with 800 attack and 0 defense, and if only your opponent controls a monster, you can special summon this card from your hand. And once per turn, during the end phase, if this card is in your grave because it was destroyed on the field and sent to the grave this turn, you can add a TG monster from your deck to your hand, except a copy of this card. If you're a long-time player, you may be familiar with this futuristic fighter, because it found its way into everything. It's a free monster you could use as tribute for monarchs, an easy level 2 for synchro summoning that didn't necessarily take up your normal summon, and was accessible by reinforcement of the army. And because it was one of the TGs that could be cycled into another one, you could run a small suite of cards including this and Warwolf to give you a roster of monsters to handle any number of summon lines. Plus, they're really passionate about workers' rights, and they'll fight for them no matter how many strikes it takes. TG Catapult Dragon is a level 2 Earth Dragon monster with 900 attack and 1300 defense, and once per turn you can special summon a level 3 or lower TG Tuner monster from your hand. So, if your tuner doesn't come with its own special summoning effect, Catapult Turtle's estranged cousin is here to help, while acting as a non-tuner material itself to help get you into your synchros. It's a shame it only works on tuners, as I'm sure your non-tuners would be just as appreciative of this, but that's the burden of being one of the older members of a theme. Sometimes your text is just bad for no reason. I certainly hope their health care is a lot better than that, though. With a catapult like that on their head, their neck must feel like murder right now. TG Metal Skeleton is a level 2 dark zombie monster with 1100 attack and 0 defense, and if any number of monsters on the field are destroyed by battle or an opponent's card effect, you can special summon this card from your hand, and if any number of TG monsters you control would be destroyed by battle or card effect, you can banish this card from your field or grave instead. This one I'm not too keen on. Since it relies on battle or your opponent's destruction effects to enable the summon, you don't have as much agency on when you can summon it, which isn't really on brand. You're either waiting for your opponent opponent to destroy a monster on field because of an effect, or going to the battle phase to destroy a monster because it doesn't care whose monster is destroyed, but that means you aren't able to leverage that material before going to the battle phase, which can be a real game changer. The destruction protection is kinda nice, but these effects are only really worth it if the rest of the card is playable, which I'm not quite convinced it is. It does look like they stuck Rito Revolto into Chrome Jello, but we've already got Gear Zombie yet, let's not get too invested in the undead here. TG Warwolf is a level 3 Dark Beast Warrior monster with 1200 attack and 0 defense, and when any number of level 4 or lower monsters are special summoned except during the damage step, you can special summon this card from your hand. And once per turn, say it with me, if this card is in the grave because it was destroyed on the field and sent there this turn, you can add a TG monster from your deck to your hand except a copy of this card. As Striker's best companion, this also saw a lot of play. Not just as easy to summon non-tuner synchro material, but as Xyz material 
as well. The new overlaying mechanic was just coming out as this was released, and there were a few decent rank 3s to go along with it. So for any level 3 that got special summoned, you could easily drop Warwolf alongside it out of your hand to access your extra deck. And because you'd want to play it alongside Striker anyway, particularly because its special summon triggered off of Strikers, you still had access to great level 5 synchros like Cataster. Warwolf has been, and continues to be, an outstanding utility monster, especially in a deck focused around pack tactics. TG Jet Falcon is a level 3 Wind Winged Beast Tuner Monster with 1400 attack and 1200 defense, and if this card is sent to the grave as Synchro Material, inflict 500 damage to your opponent. That's, uh, that's it! Proto Long Yuan here gives you a way to win in time if need be, but otherwise doesn't provide any utility. Unless you need a level 3 Wind Tuner to access a monster, which by my count is exactly High Speed Roid Clear Wing Rider, but you don't really have much business summoning that right here. We have winds, just not a lot of wind. But this tuner certainly doesn't need wind, as we strapped a jet engine to a falcon. Just another in a long line of glorious sonic birds, trans or otherwise. TG Rush Rhino is a level 4 Earth Beast monster with 1600 attack and 800 defense, and if this card attacks, it gains 400 attack during the damage step only. And once per turn, during the end phase, if this card is in the grave because it was destroyed on the field and sent there this turn, you can add a TG monster from your deck to your hand, except a copy of itself. Rush Rhino was sometimes brought in as the third member of the Striker Warwolf package to give them a much needed boost in offense. As it turns out, a normal summonable 2000 attack monster could clear some some nasty threats, and the fact that it also had the replacement effect is just icing on the cake. Though I can't help but think I've seen this before, um, level 4, earth, beast, gains 400 attack when it attacks, a Topaz Tiger, is that you? TG Screw Serpent is a level 4 Water Sea Serpent Tuner Monster with 1300 attack and 500 defense, and if this card is normal or special summoned, you can target a level 4 or lower TG monster in your grave, except a copy of this card, and special summon it, but its effects are negated. You can also banish this card from your grave, then target a TG monster you control and either increase or reduce its level by 1 until the end of this turn. Now this is some legacy support you can be proud of. Summon this noodle and you get an accompanying monster to help move your plays along, and adjusts your levels while in the grave to keep things running smoothly. Managing all these levels is hard after all, especially when it comes to synchros, since everything needs to be exact. But Serpent is here to give you what you need, so your combo lines don't end up getting screwed up. Alright, that does it for our main deck monsters, now let's take a look at our extra deck. TG Recipro Dragonfly is a level 2 Wind Insect Synchro Monster with 300 attack and defense, requiring generic material. And once per turn, you can target one other TG Synchro Monster you control and send it to the grave. Then, if all the Synchro Monsters that were used for its Synchro Summon are in the grave, you can Special Summon all of them. This is nifty in cases you need to refund your material to go down a different line, or to get more value out of their effects. Cash in one of your Synchros to get back cards like Screw Serpent for another free monster, Jet Falcon for more burn. TG Power Gladiator is a level 5 Earth Warrior Synchro Monster with 2300 attack and 1000 defense, requiring generic material. It deals piercing battle damage, and if this card on the field is destroyed, you draw a card. And once again, that's about it. If you need to push for damage and you like having cards that replace themselves when destroyed, this is where it's at. It's also a nifty piece of level 5 non-tuner synchro material that we can use down the line if and when we get locked into summoning TG monsters. Also, its design is just rad. It's got a cool axe, and it's either got a fire shield or is just fending off an explosion with its bare hand. What a gladiator beast. Hmm, cool name. Someone should make an archetype out of that. TG Hyper Librarian is a level 5 Dark Spellcaster monster with 2400 attack and 1800 defense, requiring generic material. If a monster is synchro summoned while this card is on the field, you draw a card. And this card must be phased up on the field to activate and resolve this effect. Okay, so even if you went into this video knowing nothing else about TG, you still probably know about this monster, and for good reason. See, good synchro monsters tend to work by offsetting the natural dip in card economy that comes with using the mechanic. For example, if you 
you take a tuner and a non-tuner and turn them into a synchro, you do gain a monster, but lose two as material. So these good synchro monsters, and really most extra deck monsters in general, will have an effect that offsets the cost. Chi Zhao searches you a card, Barone is removal and the negate, you get the idea. Hyper Librarian though, effectively front loads that refund, letting you draw a card every time you synchro summon. So instead of going minus one inherently, it's a net zero. And since this is not once per turn, you can keep making synchros for free, provided you have the material on field to do so, and that compounds with any advantage those synchros get you. A common combo is to synchro summon Formula Synchron after you've made Librarian. Formula offsets its summon by drawing you a card, but with Librarian, you're now drawing two cards. And that got out of hand very quickly. Suddenly, you had whole decks whose only purpose was to summon Hyper Librarian and then Synchro Summon as cheaply and often as possible to take advantage of the free draws you got. It could get you into more combo pieces to make gigantic powerful monsters like Shooting Quasar Dragon, or just deep draw you until you won with Exodia. Heck, even in our own deck, we can get away with some wacky hijinks. If we make a Recipro Dragonfly and a Power Gladiator after we get Hyper Librarian on the board, that's two draws. But from that point, you can send Gladiator to the grave with Dragonfly, get its material back, and then Synchro again to make another Gladiator to get another draw, all at no cost to your card economy. Suffice it to say, Hyper Librarian has had a huge impact on a lot of different decks because of that draw alone, and because of that, has bounced on and off the Forbidden and Limited list for a long time, currently sitting on the Limited list at time of recording. Synchros are balanced by how many cards they get you on summon with how much it costs to make them, but this card disturbs that balance, because no matter what theme or archetype is printed, none of them can stand a chance when you activate the mighty library card! TG Wonder Magician is a level 5 light spellcaster synchro tuner monster with 1900 attack and 0 defense, requiring a tuner and one or more non-tuner TG monsters as material. If this card is synchro summoned, you target a spell or trap card on the field and destroy it, and if this card on the field is destroyed, draw a card. Also, once per chain during your opponent's main phase, you can, as a quick effect, immediately after this effect resolves, synchro summon using this card you control. That's right, we've got a quick synchro on our hands, folks, letting us utilize powerful on some and effects at the drop of a hat. Being able to sneak in a Black Rose Dragon on your opponent's turn at the right time can still be devastating. It also comes packaged with back row removal in case there's a field spell that's giving your opponent a bit too much advantage, or a floodgate that's giving you trouble. It can even pop one of your own cards if it'll get you some value, though be careful because this is mandatory and it will go after your own back row if you're not careful. You would actually see this card a lot when Halka Firebrax wasn't forbidden, because any deck that ran it would have access to its back row removal removal and quick syncing abilities. But without that Crystron companion, it's now back to our exclusive use. Also, because it's not once per turn, it's another outstanding option for Recipro Dragonfly to refund, so you can do it all over again to deal with more back row. It's a lot of value out of a single spellcaster, so it's no wonder why this magician is so good. TG Star Guardian is a level 5 light warrior synchro tuner monster with 100 attack and 2200 defense, requiring a tuner and one or more non-tuner TG monsters as material. If this card is special summoned, you can target a TG monster in your grave and add it to your hand, and during your main phase, you can special summon a TG monster from your hand. And on top of all of that, Star Guardian can also quick sync like Wonder Magician. This has a bit more utility than Wonder Magician in a vacuum, effectively giving you back one of the material used for its summon, though it does allow you you to recycle any TG in your grave for some flexibility, and is once again another great target for Recipro Dragonfly. Though this is a hard once per turn, so you're not able to keep getting cards out of your grave over and over again in a single turn. Still, this makes for a great bridge into higher level synchros at no additional cost, making this a great card to help get your deck into Brune Overdrive. Alright, we're almost to our big bosses, but before we focus on them, I want to quickly bring in a monster meant to help with their summons, our very first TG Link monster. TG Trident Launcher is a Link 3 Earth Machine monster with 2200 attack, requiring two or more effect monsters, including a TG Tuner monster, as material. If this card is Link Summoned, you can special summon three TG monsters, one each from your hand, deck, and grave in defense position to your zones this card points to. Also, you're not able to special summon monsters for the rest of the turn, 
except TG monsters. And your opponent can't target TG synchro monsters this card points to with card effects. So not only does this help you mobilize material for your big summons, it also helps keep them safe. Now, the big problem with this card is that you need to have a TG in hand to even activate this effect, which is why Star Guardian is so important, as it will ensure this effect goes off without a hitch, and just so happens to be a tuner to cover the required material. This just means we'll need a Link 2 to summon this efficiently, and we used to have Halka Fibrax for this, but once again, this deck is paying for the ridiculous ceiling of other archetypes, leaving us with very few one-card options moving forward. Despite all that, it's a great monster to have on hand if you have the materials and circumstances for it to really launch you ahead of the competition. Alright, time for the big baddies. TG Blade Blaster is a level 10 Earth Machine Synchro Monster with 3300 attack and 2200 defense, requiring a Tuner Synchro Monster and one or more non-Tuner Synchro Monsters as material. During either player's turn, when your opponent activates a Speller Trap card that targets this face-up card, you can send a card from your hand to the grave to negate that effect. And once per turn, during your opponent's turn as a quick effect, you can banish a TG Monster from your grave to banish this face-up card on the field, and during the next standby phase after this card was banished by this effect, special summon this card. So you have a huge monster that resists spell and trap targeting, though with launcher that'll be a non-issue, and if anything does threaten it, you can just phase it out, kinda like Stardust Dragon, then it can come back to smash face. It's not exactly a banger in modern Yu-Gi-Oh, but I've gotta respect a monster that can load a blade into a gun and blast it at their opponent, a peak aesthetic right there. TG Halberd Cannon is a level 12 Earth Machine Synchro Monster with 4,000 attack and defense, requiring a Tuner Synchro Monster and two or more non-Tuner Synchro Monsters as material, and must be Synchro Summoned and can't be Special Summoned by other ways. Once per turn, during either player's turn, when any number of monsters would be summoned, you can negate the summon, and if you do, destroy those monsters. But this card must be phase up on the field to activate and resolve this effect. And when this card is sent from the field to the grave, you can target a TG monster in your grave and special summon it. So we have an absolutely titanic monster that negates summons and floats into another TG if your opponent gets rid of it. And since Blade Blaster doesn't have a restriction on it, as long as you summon it properly, you can float from an obelisk-sized monster into a slightly smaller one. Heck, Recipro Dragonfly shines here again as well. You can properly make Blade Blaster, refund it using Recipro Dragonfly, and because the bug has the two levels you need to make up the difference between 10 and 12, you've got a pretty good setup right there, making sure you take on the competition fully pole-armed. We've also got one more Excel Synchro Monster to cover. We've seen it before in Yusei Explained, but it's also a TG, so we can't really skip it here. Shooting Star Dragon TGX is a level 10 Wind Dragon Synchro Monster with 3300 attack and 2500 defense, requiring a Tuner Synchro Monster and one or more non-Tuner Synchro Monsters as material. When a monster effect is activated that targets any number of monsters you control as a quick effect, you can banish a Tuner from your grave, negate the activation, and if you do, destroy that card. Also, once per turn, when an opponent's monster declares an attack, you can negate that attack, and during your opponent's turn, if this card is in your grave as a quick effect, you can tribute two Synchro Monsters to special summon this card. This is probably going to be the preferred option to summon over Blade Blaster nowadays. It keeps monster effects at bay, stops attacks at your smaller monsters, and has a way to revive itself if you find yourself with multiple Synchros. It's a much more modern take on what Tech Genus can do, so this gets a gold shooting star from me. Alright, that's our monster lineup, now it's time for the spells and traps, and get ready for these names, because they are a doozy. TGX1-HL is a quick play spell card that targets a TG monster you control, its attack and defense each become half its current attack and defense, and if they do, destroy one other spell or trap card on the field. So this looks like a strange MST on the surface, and in some respects it's also weaker. If the targeted monster is destroyed or removed from the field in any way, the spell and trap destruction doesn't work, because it relies on you having the stats of the targeted monster, but it's also better in some other ways. While it does target your monster, it doesn't target the card you're going to destroy, so your opponent can't just flip a card to get value out of it, because if they do and you have other options, you can just jam that card instead. The stat reduction also isn't an issue, like with Gear Zombie, if we're using it as synchro material anyway, it doesn't much matter. Now, I'd usually make a joke here, as is my way, but I'd have to understand what I'm looking at to do it. I mean, what even is this? It's like someone try to AI generate an image of a hand vac. 
TGX 300 is a continuous spell card that gives a 300 attack boost to all face-up monsters you control for each TG monster you control. This is an interesting piece of tech. Normally, you consolidate your TGs into a single, powerful monster, but that'll only really get you a 300 point boost, not really a game changer. But if you get Striker, Warwolf, and Rush Rhino onto the board, you're looking at a 900 point boost to each. And this boost even goes to your non-TGs, so any synchro you splash in from off theme can end up looking like a totally different monster. It'll take a fundamentally different approach towards playing the deck, but this weird gadget can, uh... Um... Okay, I'm lost here. Uh, repeat the last joke, but replace hand vac with blow dryer. TGX3-DX2 is a normal trap card that targets three TG monsters in your grave, shuffles all three into the deck, then draws you two cards. Yeah, it's a delayed pot of avarice that helps you recycle all your monsters. This can be pretty useful in the late game to reset your material, but this kind of card is already pretty vulnerable to grave disruption as it is. In this iteration, because it's a trap card, you don't even get to use the cards you drew immediately like if it were a spell card. So unless you just drew into hand traps with this, this strange hoverbike is going nowhere fast. TG-SX1 is a normal trap card that you can activate when a TG monster you control destroys an opponent's monster by battle and sends it to the grave. Target a TG synchro monster in your grave and special summon it. Now this can get pretty devastating. By beating up one monster, you can get another back like Power Gladiator or even the Might of Blade Blaster to immediately swing in for more damage. Destroying a monster by battle is a very 5D's trigger condition that doesn't really translate well to today's meta, but if you can get this going, it's potentially a game ender. It's also finally got something I can latch onto visually. Look, the little canister has the synchro rings and level stars. That's a cute little addition. TG1-EM1 is a continuous trap card that targets a monster your opponent controls and a TG monster you control and switches control of both monsters. Now, this is one of the strongest pieces of support we have bar none. As a trap card, you can use this as an interrupt to take a really nice card while giving your opponent one of your dinky little creatures. And if it's got one of those neat floating effects, you walk away with all the advantage when you run it over. This is easily a must run in pure versions of the deck, especially in the side for when you know you're going first, giving you a strong tool to turn the tables on your opponent. Sonic Stun is a normal trap card that you can activate when an opponent's monster declares an attack to negate the attack, then you can special summon a TG monster or a level 4 or lower tuner from your hand or deck. Yeah, whatever small tuners you splash into the deck also work with this card. However, the fact that it's a negate attack is going to be the biggest barrier to entry here, as, once again, relying on your opponent to enable your game plan isn't a winning strategy. Still, if you're looking for cards to fill out your deck list, well... I mean, there are some really good generic options, but if you need to fill out your deck list and are on a budget, this fits the bill. It's also a support card that actually has a comprehensible name. Okay, with all that info under our belts, let's go through a combo line that you can use once you're piloting the deck. For this one, I'm going to show you how you can get right into Shooting Star TG, or with a really good hand, Halberd Cannon, so we have access to our strongest monsters. For this, you're going to need a TG in hand, either Screw Serpent or Tank Grub, and a Neo Space Connector. No, I am not kidding. Normal summon it to get Neo Space and Aqua Dolphin out of your deck. At this point, you can check your opponent's hand using Aqua Dolphin, but it's not really necessary. Link these two into Esold, because Dolphin is a warrior for some reason, and search out a warrior extender, but not Striker. We're going to be using Esold's other effect for that, sending two equips from your deck to the grave. Living Fossil lines up really well with our tiny monsters, while the other can be DDR, which can recycle banished screw serpents later on. This fulfills all the requirements to link into Trident Launcher, and now we can really get cooking. Summon back the Striker from Grave, the TG in hand, and either Screw Serpent or Tank Grub from the deck, whichever one you didn't have in your hand. From this point, you sync Serpent and Grub, because Grub can be treated as a non-tuner for TG Synchros, to make Star Guardian. This gets you a token from Grub, and Guardian gets you back Serpent. Use Guardian Summon from Hand Effect to get Serpent onto the board, which will then trigger to summon Grub back from your grave.
Now we sink Serpent and the token into Hyper Librarian, so now we have the level 5 Guardian as our tuner, level 5 Librarian as a non-tuner, Tank Grub, and Striker. So from here, we can either make Shooting Star TGEX to give our board targeting protection, or if we have either Booster Raptor or Drillfish in addition to the necessary cards, we can summon them for free, sync with the Grub to make Dragonfly, and now we've got everything we need to make Halberd Cannon. Alright, so that's all the TG cards, but what do we do with them? Well, it's Synchro Toolbox time for us. Our Excel Synchros are our only real powerhouse, but because we only have one lock via Trident, we can actually flex into a lot of different Synchros using our onboard engine. And even with that lock, we have a surprising amount of options. So what can we play to help them out? First off, the Assault Mode engine is really cool here. Once again, it's another casualty of the Halka Fibrax hit, as we can no longer use this to access the material for Trident Launcher while getting better material. But even without that, as long as we summon Reflector using one of our three emergency teleports, that's a free Hyper Librarian to help us during the rest of our combos, maybe even drawing us into free summons from there, while giving us access to Halberd Cannon Assault Mode. Yeah, I bet you thought I forgot about that, huh? Don't worry, I've got a whole video about Assault Mode in general, but it's still pretty strong here. After all, a reactive, banishing Raigeki is no joke. For synchros outside our theme, how about Barone? Launcher does lock us into TGs, but thankfully we have quite a few quick sinking tuners in our deck, namely Star Guardian. If we look at our last combo line, we can actually choose not to synchro summon using our synchros, then once it turns over to our opponent's turn when the lock fades away, we can use Star Guardian's effect to synchro into Barone. But if you want even more removal, you can quick sync into Satellite Warrior. If we look at some other combinations of levels, we can also make Borload Savage Dragon, which should not be overlooked. Between the Esold and the Trident Launcher, we'll have plenty of links engraved to fuel its negation power. And having some interrupts to keep our opponent from interacting with us is great. And if Trident Launcher survives after the turn it uses its effect, it's easy link material for access code talker, which means massive damage. D-Synchro has been a funny part of Hyper Librarian builds for quite a while. As long as the material is still in the grave, you can bring them back and sync again, basically turning D-Synchro into an upstart goblin that can also trigger any applicable on summon effects, as well as ones that trigger when used as synchro material. Technically, this is what Recipro is here for, but this lets you do it without needing to make a level 2 synchro. As for a silly tech pick, well, Antinomy did put it all on the line to teach Yusei how to excel Synchro Summon, a, it'd be a shame not to use it. So, if you've got the material for Halberd Cannon, a little quick syncing on our opponent's turn can get you shooting Quasar Dragon. A clear mind never looked so, well, clear. And that's all I have to say about Tech Genus. There's a lot to learn here for those patient and talented enough to run the combo lines, giving you access to some of the game's best and brightest. And even though they may be a little outdated, a bit of a tune-up is all they need to get right back into the action. But just you wait, when they finally get updated to the Tech Species archetype, they're gonna pop off. But now, I wanna hear what you all have to say. Does TG stand for Triumphant Gathering or Tragic Group? And which one is your favorite? I gotta say, Halberd Cannon Assault Mode looks pretty cool. And while you're down there, make sure to like and subscribe so we can reach that Akiza Explained 50k subscriber goal and share this video with someone you know who loves Yu-Gi-Oh! It really does a lot to help me out. Today's episode was brought to you in part by Dragon Shield. When you want to protect your cards with the power of Dragon Scales, get some sweet lore for them, and support the channel, check out my link in the description to get started. This video was also brought to you by my lovely patrons, including this month's illustrious Quasar Commander Green Knight, Nebula Navigator's Third Dynasty, Adam Zajdel, Andrew Newman, Avi Chali, Kane Senpai, Cameron Berg, Chibi Gohan, Colin Todd, Eric, Frankie, Genesis Yu-Gi-Oh, Gloomba331, Great Big Pillock, Hair Bear, Harry the Ominous Benefactor, Howling Zangetsu, Ironic, 
Iskander711, Jester Designs, John Monji, Jordan, Julia Sneezer, Mana Charge, Marluxia is a Girl, Meteornis, Panther J, Rebel King Lucifer, Rem T. Bright, RJ the Jank Monarch, Ruxith Sarani, Sammy Haim, Salen Lucius, Sophie, apparently, The Charizard Flame, The Fresh Prince of Conair, The Wizard Moose, and Xander Wolfensberger, Cosmic Crusaders, Ariel Kersey, Bear Sharktopus Studios, Chaz Ghost, Childish Lamar, Chris Kessler, Corbinisms, Danny Bound, Drakenwald, Emony, Eva Padilla, Gatorade, H2O, Gatorade, H2O, Johnny sucks, he really, really sucks, Haro, Herbal D, Jesus Garcia, Kale the Dragon, Carp, King Scarlet Yu-Gi-Oh, Lord whoop de doo Manga Pages, Marion James E. Picotta, Matt Simmons, Nitromo, Shooting Star 3300, Star Lord 777, Super Purd, the Legendary Raven and Tucker Ordorn, as well as the wonderful Starlight Explorers you see on screen now. I'm only able to continue doing this thanks to the support of these lovely people. So if you'd like to help support the channel, get your name in these credits, and get my videos earlier than anyone else, make sure to check out my link down in the description for my Patreon to see if I have anything you'd like on offer. And if you want to see another video where I talk about a deck that loves Synchro Summoning, check out this video I made covering the latest installment of the Vicious Lore, Manodome. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye